So durability testing, as, as a lot of us probably know, products fail in the field. Um, and, and with some intelligence and, and with some knowledge of the use cycle, we can use lab tests to replicate these failure modes. Um, and then once we understand these failure modes, <clears throat> once we can replicate them, we can understand that product life cycle and, and use tools to design a longer life cycle for the given operation. So traditional powertrain durability testing, you know, we wanna identify the likely failure mechanisms. So for example, we're gonna take a car out on the road, identify what its torque and speed profile is. And, and this is some actual road data for torque and speed um, from a Chevy Bolt. We're gonna take that real world data we're gonna use it to create a torque and speed profile for a vehicle. And then we're gonna to want to try to accelerate those tests in the lab. So we go from that in service, that, that damage in service, and then we go to the lab and we try to replicate that with a predictive profile or an accelerated profile. And this could be done by using higher than normal loading, using higher than normal frequencies or higher than normal temperatures. And this is where things start to get difficult with electric motors, as we'll touch on in a little bit. And then at the end of that, after we've you know, identified our road fatigue, we've identified our in-lab fatigue methods, um, we're gonna wanna do a, a teardown and comparative analysis of how these things have degraded, how these components have failed. So we're, we're definitely gonna you know, see this theme continued into the electrics. So the questions that arise for lab durability testing are, how long do we test for? You know, given my product's life cycle, given my product's profile, how long do I test for? What are the loading conditions? What are the temperatures? You know, how much torque, how much speed? What is the ramp rates? And then how many samples? What am I measuring and how frequently do I need to measure to understand these fatigue modes and, and these failure modes? So these are really the questions that we're hopefully gonna look to answer today on the electrical side. I'll, I'll trust the experts for the mechanical side. 